Hello and welcome to In the House, your current affairs program about Parliament. Today we're going to just do a general overview of how the budget is sitting with some of our parliamentarians. We have one from the majority side and one from the minority side. Before that, we'll do a review of what's been happening in Parliament over the last few weeks since Parliament will be wrapping up. If you're interested in letting us know how you feel or what you're thinking about what the uh, panelists will say, you can send us text. So our short code is 1403. That's 1403. And you can send anything. The only thing is you must be decorous about it. If you're interested in sponsoring, you can call us on 0289-531-852. That's 0289-531-852. We'll be happy to get your sponsorship. When we come back, you'll meet the panelists and we'll discuss the budget. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is In the House, your current affairs program about Parliament. Today I have on the panel two members. One, the Honourable Member from Keta, the Honourable Richard Kwashiga. Honourable, you're welcome. Thank you very much. The other, the Honourable Member representing Krabuakuta. I hope I got that right. That would be against you. Against you. Know. Why did I think Krabuakuta? Uh -huh. That is the, the capital. You see, I keep mixing capital. this. Yeah. Forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> the Honorable Samuel Ayepe. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you, my brother. Uh -huh. General overview for the last few weeks. You're wrapping up in Parliament. Exactly. Your general overview for the last few weeks that you've been sitting. Uh, I'll start with you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, to encapsulate all that we've done in um, a sentence, one would say that, uh, we, of course, we've been able to pass a number of um, uh, a number of bills, and and therefore, um, but significant among all the work that we've done is the two and a half percent uh, increase in VAT that obviously was to take care of the deficits that we suffered in uh, 2013. Um, clearly, a lot of uh, resources were needed as it were to meet the wage bill and that actually uh, generated a lot of overruns uh, that which affected infrastructural development and therefore the uh, increase in the VAT became extremely very necessary and that uh, is to forestall for the shortfall of infrastructure in 2014 as we uh, journey along and so I would say that apart from the many um, bills that or leg legislations that uh, took pay place during the, 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 the meeting, um, the most significant was the passage of the two and a half uh, a bill okay. and the amendments that were proposed to the, um, what was the name, oh my god. That the amendments for the for the bills. That, the amendment for the uh, the budget. The VAT bill. The VAT bill. The, yeah, the amendments. The VAT Act. Right. The amendments uh, proposed to the VAT Act to make it more potent right. and more effective. And also, we also saw, for instance, um, the passage of um, the ZTE bill that which is supposed that's the GOTA, which is supposed to you know as it were. That was a controversial one. You guys got phones. Well, I mean, those were those are security phones. Uh, they are not the normal phones that you can talk that about. That was not the message we were given. Yeah. The understanding was that you guys did it almost as if it's, it comes with a package. Oh, not at as all. As if you are supposed to have it. It's almost like a thank you type of... Now, I think uh, the first phase of that particular project... I, I didn't want to use the word bribe. No, I mean, it clearly not was a bribe, and I think that was explained by the leadership of Parliament. But is it acceptable, and, and I'll come to the Honourable on this particular matter, but is it acceptable for parliamentarians to be receiving those types of things? No, I mean, clearly this was a security gadget which will enable uh, members to, act, as it were, interface with one another very easily. And also but you buy speak. your own phones. No, those are our normal phones cannot do that. You know, how do you communicate with all will MPs I, at the same will time? I, will I come yes, you can. Yeah. Um, I think, let me first say, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> hello to uh, your <laughs> yes, again, yeah. especially those in Ayunciano okay. and uh, Ayunciano district. Yeah. Uh, my brother, I, this issue came out, and at times, I don't blame the general public and the media for some of those things, I'll put them right on the footstep of the parliament, uh, parliamentary service. I'm talking about the, the, 
the PRO of Parliament. Right. That should come out and explain some of these things to Ghana for them to understand. What's happening is that this is an, a, a loan agreement that comes with a package. Like, we are, when the loan is passed, it means the, the company that is coming to supply security phones, not to Parliament alone, but other institutions, including the police, the, the Parliament, uh, the judicial service, the executives, and uh, the national security and co. So when uh, the agreement came, first there was some problem with it. There's a difference between dismissing a, a loan agreement and also referral. When you, the loan agreement comes to parliament and there's a problem with it, we can refer it to the Ministry for Correction and bring it back. And then we have a loan agreement that will come. Then we have outright dismissal. This is not what happened. When the loan agreement came, we found out some challenges with it, and we asked the minister to withdraw, do the correction, and it lay. So when the whole thing was withdrawn, I don't know what came into the mind of those who are coming with the contract. Instead of them to wait during the, uh, the agreement for us to pass it before hours. Because if you read the details of the document, ah, so what you're saying is that instead of waiting parliament, and then the parliament is a beneficiary of, of the program. Whether we pass it before they give it to us or they give it to us before we pass it, at the end of the day, we're going to uh, receive the phones. So instead of them to wait for us to pass the agreement, after we've looked at it, we refer it to them to do the correction and bring it back. When they did the correction, they were bringing it back. They came with the phones. As a matter of fact, some of the members, some of us, We've been sat down and passed before we heard that hours have been brought. The, the mobile phones came when we were in recess. So I quite remember I had a call that we had some phones we have to pick. I came here and that phone was given to me. It is a security phone. And that phone will not cost more than 100 Ghana cities. And the question is, if I would take bribe, of which I will never do, to pass a multi-million dollar loan for a company, will my gentleman, my brother here, would take a 100 Ghana CD loan, a, a bribe, to pass a million dollar loan agreement? It's definitely no. No member of parliament. So then it that. means that you didn't do a good job of protecting yourself and as far as you And then, but then it means that you could have also stopped the phones from coming till after you are dealt with. Yeah, but but, but I, I, that's not going to be the focus of our. Yeah, so, our so and and I think that the explanation is, is, is quite to, good for you. It is difficult to. I want us to wrap up because I, it, yeah. it is not actually since the time is almost up. Let's go to your overview of this. Period. Well, this this part initially was uh, a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, I cut you short, but no, no. that issue came <laughs> in. And, uh, yes. It is. Uh, it started as a very slow parliament. Uh, that activities were in March, but mid to the end of it, we saw a lot of activities. Loan agreement came to parliament. That specifically titled uh, uh, tied to my committee was the uh, hundred million dollar loan for the Tamale International Airport and also that of the expansion Your committee is which committee? Transport Rules and Transport Committee yeah. and also the expansion of uh, Takrade Harbour of which uh, sword was cut recently which also passed a number of bills some are still at the consideration stage for instance we have the Land Breeders Bill uh, just recently the amendment of PNDC Law 111 that is a uh, interstate succession law has also been laid and we are also going to, to consider that. So uh, we've done a lot of uh, job this term. Uh, as I said, a, bit, a number of bills have been passed. Others are still in the process. Uh, we consider a number of loans and then this budget too. My brother made mention of the uh, tax. It's not only that. We've passed special levies and then the amendment of the VAT also, in which the money said is going to the uh, infrastructure fund. I have my own reservation in terms of infrastructure fund. If you want so to, we're going to go into the details. Of yes, that if you want in to, the budget discussion. Yes, yes. So in the budget the discussion, we'll, yes, yeah. we'll come there because I have my own uh, reservations there. So in fact, we've done a lot. And then uh, yesterday, for instance, we left here around 7 p.m. And today, yesterday, as in Monday, the 15th. Yeah, 15th. Normally, yeah. we don't sit on Monday, but looking at the workload, and I think we have to uh, go on. Uh, we rise on uh, tomorrow, so definitely we have to clear all the backlog before we definitely go home tomorrow. So a lot of things are being done. And but what we'll do is that, that those were just your general comments. Yes, what we'll do is that we'll go, you know, take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking specifically about the budget that's been this, right now is in the appropriation stage. Not so. Yeah. Yes, and so we'll do that one. But uh, they're going to give us their views on the budget and maybe specific areas that uh, they are interested in. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is In the House, your current affairs program about Parliament. Uh, today we're looking at the budget, and our panelists are the Honourable Member representing Keta, the Honourable Richard Kwashiga, and the Honourable Member representing Ayensuano. I almost said Krabwa again. Ayensuano, uh, the Honourable Ayepe. Honourables, Honourable Ayepe, I'll start with you. Yeah. This budget, it was a good budget. Is that your view? Well, I will the budget say, for 2014. Yeah, I, I, I would say no, and I just want to say no because uh, I don't want a situation that will say, oh, it's because it's coming from the government that I, I, I am in a position, so it's not a good budget. Why is it not a good budget? You see, I don't want a situation where at a point in time we are going to look at the budget uh, passage and the consideration as an economic exercise. So as a government, it is, it's important for us to look at what we can do within the year and prepare ourselves to meet that. So when we have a budget which is not loaded, budget that is specific, budget that will go and address specific issues, and then we deal with it, we 100% execute the budget. Then the next year you look at it, then bit by bit we are developing the country. If you look at the 2013 budget and see at what we've been able to do as a country, considering the 2013 budget, and look at what we have projected to do in 2014, you ask yourself, are we doing this simply because we think we have to pass budget at the end of the year, so we have to do it? The answer is simply no. Because I'm saying this because if you look at leases and what the, 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 the 2013 budget have been able to do, I don't think we have to load the next budget. So we must rather concentrate on the unfinished business that the 2013 budget wasn't able to do. So your we general that, view is that... We move forward and see what we can do again, than to load the budget, present it as if a whole lot of things are going to... At the end of the day, then government will keep on crying. So you're saying that, that the no budget money. is generally overloaded? And that the previous one hasn't even been the properly no fulfilled. Money syndrome, the well, no-money syndrome is hitting all the sectors. You're, 2013, you're, nothing you're, significantly was done. And we are looking at another budget to, as if that is not enough, to add to the unfinished business you're, of Your opposition, let's hear what the government side says. What exactly is in the budget that pleases you? General, your general but, but, view and then we zero yeah, in Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, if, you want, if you feel like um, in your process you're going to respond well, to some of his things. I think that it's uh, very appropriate to put uh, things in their proper perspective. Very well. And um, it doesn't surprise me that my colleague will not see anything he good said, with this budget. because he said, don't um, talk like that. Uh, <laughs> there have never been a time that my colleagues on the other side have ever seen anything good in a budget presented by a government that is led by the NDC and vice versa has been the case and I think that uh, probably we will have to move away from that partisan posture and tend to look at things from a more nationalistic and objective view. Now if you ask my perspective um, I would honestly say that this budget which has been christened um, rising to the challenge realigning the budget to meet key national priorities it's a very realistic budget, very visionary in outlook and, um, you know, having done a critical anal analysis of the challenges of 2013, you know, having taken, uh, you know, the necessary bold steps, strategic steps, as it were, to deal with the deficits of 2013, I think that it's very apt uh, document to talk about. Now, you see, if my colleague talk about this document being loaded, then... Uh, it, it, it will sound as though you, you are not in tune with the kind of budget that we're dealing with. We used to deal with activity-based budget. The 2013 budget was an activity-based budget. But this particular budget, which we've all been well informed of, is um, a program-based budget. Can and we, program -based can we deal budget, with that particular portion? What is an activity-based budget and a program-based budget? An activity-based budget obviously focuses on the various activities that have been fleshed out in the budget to be carried out. For example? Yeah, for, for example, we are going to construct the uh, uh, Asenka Gral Road, etc. That kind That's of thing. an activity. That's an activity. You know, and the focus is on your activities, mm -hmm. precisely. But then, when, what we're looking at, which is a program-based budget, is looking at the outcomes, outcomes of a program. And the program, obviously, will be pregnant with series of activities. Example? For example, we, 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 we can talk about, you know, finishing a number of road projects within a certain timeline, you know, maybe in two, three years. 
So you find out in this budget that though it is an annual budget, it also, you know, make projections against 2015, 2016, and even 2017. You know, because... Okay. You okay. Just, uh, just a sec. What, that, does that mean that if, for example, the San Gregorio Road is going to cost 10 CDs over three years, you are discussing the first four CDs this year. This and year. You, are, you are suggesting to what parliament that over the next two years you spend the projections. six more CDs. Yeah, That's exactly. What you're the exactly. The projections for the next two, two years. Okay? And that obviously, you know, um, is, is going to focus on what achievement, what are going to be the outcomes of 2014. Because you intend to spend four cities on this particular project, you know, uh, for 2014, and maybe six cities on 2016, 2015, and 2016. So at the end of the day, you are looking at the outcomes, the results. And that is what this budget is about. And the reason for which it may appear, you know, to some as a very loaded budget. But that notwithstanding, it also takes care of the shortfalls of 2013. Some of the projects, some of the activities that ought to be done in 2013, for instance, dams, irrigation projects that were supposed to be undertaken in no, 2013 no. that have not been okay. um, done, have all been captured no, again no. in this budget. Okay. The reason for which it talks about realigning to meeting the national priorities. Okay. Now, quickly, just for viewers, if you've been hearing a, a, a bell sounding, it is part of Parliament's uh, activities. It's a culture in Parliament. Uh, they're rallying all the MPs to come into the chamber because they want to start. And also it will identify that the Speaker is about to enter the chamber. So uh, don't be disturbed by it. We've actually brought you live to Parliament. Um, and then to you again, and this time a little shorter time for you, um, your specific issue within the budget that excites you. Yeah, what excites me a lot about this budget, which makes it very realistic, is the talk about the Ghana Infrastructure Fund, which is a fund that um, will pull resources into it, you know, specifically for development projects. And um, that will create indirectly job for, the young, for a lot of young people who are currently unemployed. And that will also stimulate a growth in the infrastructural um, um, arena. Uh, clearly, we, it, it will uh, talk about more rules. It will talk about Portable water, you know, moving to uh, the nook and cranny of our society. It will also, as it were, you know, talk about, you know, the, uh, addressing the housing deficit and all that, you know. And again, it's another aspect is the package for the small skills uh, business people, the SMEs, you know, the, the fund has been created for them. And that also tells you that without necessarily mentioning it directly, uh, this budget is private sector de driven. What it means is that it's giving muscle to the private sector, you know, as it were, to uh, galvanize right. their activities. And also, uh, the fact that, um, um, you know, the poultry farmers, you know, and people who are going to, um, you know, import products for the educational sector and etc. are getting some stimulus package are all very good news. And these clearly are, you know, very effective approaches, as it were, to address the kind of challenges that um, 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 we have. Honorable IAP, there's some good news there. <laughs> Small scale enterprises are going to be looking very good. Infrastructure is going to be in the, in the right direction, mm. so to speak. After all, you'll have a fund, uh, and it will be channeling to meet all our needs in a structured just, form. Just before I start, let That's me a good go back, yeah, let me go back on yeah. the difference between the activity base and the program based budget. Okay. We've all done sets in school, in mathematics. A set of activities speak one program. So let's, I mean, let me take a very typical example on education. For instance, if the government says that we are going to increase the percentage passed from BEC, that is senior high, junior high school to senior high school, from say 50% to 60%, that is a program. Mm -hmm. That what activities that should be performed so that at the end of 20, 2014, instead of having 50% passed from senior, junior high school to senior high school, we are going to have 60%. The activities run provision of exercise book free of charge to students, provision of chalk, payment of capitation grant. These are the activities that should be performed. Construction of school 
buildings, that is removing schools and our trees. These are all activities that will achieve the program of the government. So if in the previous year it is activities coming together, you can study the program based by to know that if I have 10 programs and average every program we have about five activities, time 10 will give you uh, 50 activities. So you can easily look at it and see that, oh, this budget is loaded. But the, but the difference and between your description is there's a bit of a difference. Am it's, I, it's the same. It's the sure. same. Yes. Because he referred to the timeline. The but you're it, not referring to timeline. No, no. You're that not referring was, I, no, I mean, it is timeline. I said by the end of 2013. It can be by the end of 2014. It can be by the end of 2015. So the program will run, the activities okay, will so run up to 20. Right. I said about the end of 2014. Okay. Okay. Well, I would try to consider example. It can go to 2014, it can go to 2016. But my point is that if indeed we have a program to make sure that we increase the number of people that enter senior high school from junior high school by 60%, and 2013, capitation grant, first, second, third quarter didn't go, the activities is not performed. If what, what is your, where are you heading to? Because what I'm heading to yes. is that I want to prove that we have unfinished business. But how does that, 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 how that, does that I mean, we're looking at a new budget. That is, what, that is, what that is, is where, issue? that is where most Ghanaians That's what don't understand. Saying. We're looking when at we're a new budget. we're talking about budget, it is the estimate. That is why if you look at the, activi the, 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 the activities, hmm. you look at the performance from 2013, the projection 2014. So budget is not about what we are going to do in 2014. It is looking at what we have been able to do and in 2013 and our projections in 2014. That is budget. You don't look at the budget. For instance, the Ministry of Roads and Highways came to the committee. They came with their projections in 2014. We couldn't consider their estimate. We asked them to go back, bring their, what they've been able to do, projections, what we vote for them, what the releases they've been able to get. If, for instance, a ministry come out and item two, item two, only 7.2% had been released for item two for the whole 2013. And then you increase item two by 20%, seeing that we are going to do a lot in 2014. Definitely, it's academic exercise. Just count them. All this fund, the common fund, are in arrest. Common fund is arrest for two years. So it's not that you disagree with him. You're just worried that what I'm the, the money is that. not from sorry. I'm can I, can I make a correction? Yes, the common fund is not in arrest for two years. I mean, if I'm you... I didn't say two years. Yeah, you mentioned two years. If you say two terms, two, two quarters. Two quarters. Two, the one term referring to one quarter. Yeah, so, yeah, so, just to... So, so two quarters. Two terms. Two what two I quarters, want to arrive at is... Six months. Yeah, that's... Yeah, two six months. What I want to arrive at is just the same in account. That's a more good thing I have. Thank you for me. We have the debt fund who's in arrest for three quarters. We have the common fund who is in arrest for two quarters. We have the national health insurance fund who is arrest for three quarters. I mean, and you haven't, can, can, can you haven't put money into this account. And you are they are all in arrest for two quarters, if, not three quarters. Even if it is, if it is two quarters each, that that grants me. But is it, is it the same thing as this investment? Exactly. Is it? Is it? The, the, the difference is this. No, it's the same. What is happening? Why is it the the deduction. Now, will you, will you, yeah, will you wrap up? Yeah. Okay, wrap up. You see, what, what we're talking about fund, for instance, the common fund, whatever revenue the government will be able to mobilize at the end of the day, a percentage should be taken at source into the common fund before the rest go into the consolidated fund. The, the infrastructure fund you're talking about is the same thing. When government mobilizes the money from the revenue, the other resources, take 2.5% from the VAX that you take, send it to infrastructure fund and the rest go to the consolidated fund. So if at the end of the day, government take the money, let's say first quarter, the money has come, it's so much, percentage is not calculated, percentage did not go to common fund, everything pushed into the consolidated fund and used, common fund comes into the rest. It's even illegal. You know, population will be run by the act, and government must go by the act. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the play, I will disagree with a lot of the issues that you raised. Um, just to put issues in perspective, of course, yes, well, there's some of the statutory funds are in arrears uh, for two quarters. That is, there's no denying those. Um, but you see, what created um, those shortfalls? It was because we never anticipated that workers were going to make demands for, uh, you know, market premiums and all these premiums and allowances that workers but agitated for. Wasn't that automatic, considering that you were going to implement the SSS? single science spine. Yeah, but it, it, we, we, we all are witnesses in this country that uh, talking about a single spine, 
um, you know, uh, like the doctors, uh, yeah, the doctors, you know, uh, came up with some calculations of the years. You know, they some decided to go to court. Court granted the leave of, uh, you know, upheld their demands and etc. Government was compelled to look for money to pay these. Where is going? To, government going to get the monies? Clearly, if that has become the case, the wage bill would have to be looked at first. You know, naturally, because if people, as workers are saying they are not going to work, they are going to pour onto the streets until you give them certain demands. And their demands are not even their salaries, but then some extra. The government will have to take up that. Other than that, the whole system grinds to a halt. And so the reason for which these statutory funds were in areas, you know, other than that, we will not have a situation where the statutory funds will be in areas. But then we're saying that in the effort to realign all these you know, in relation to national priorities, yeah. government has decided, you know, to increase uh, value added tax by two and a half percent. And the two and a half percent, we are told, will go straight into the infrastructure. Plan. And what it means, therefore, is that uh, we, we can be assured that those funds, you know, will be targeted, are specifically targeted. And that is what uh, it, it, it all means. Well, and you see, oh, no, let me cut you here. We'll take a quick break. Oh, we come back to the same point. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is In the House, your current affairs program about Parliament. Uh, we've been discussing the budget. We've looked at uh, the Honorable Kashiga's view of the budget, which he's going to wrap up on. Because uh, Thank you very much. And so uh, these are the reasons for the OLB. The overruns and again also deficits as far as the statutory parts are concerned. Now, one of the steps that I'm taking in this budget to forestall that is um, getting some agencies, government agencies that subsist on the consolidated fund to not pay themselves because they are able to uh, actually pay themselves. I'm a member of the Public Accounts Committee, for instance. We made some of these recommendations and we're very uh, excited that it's taken on board by government in that. When you take, for instance, Ghana Standards Authority, they are able to generate enough revenue in IGF, you know, to more than six times how much they even take from government. So why must they continue to take money from government when they have surplus in their accounts? You know, and a number of agencies, as it were, a number of agencies, you know, have been taken off government, um, uh, 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 the sub consolidated fund, and that in itself gives relief. You know, to government to really be able to meet some of these statutory obligations. And so, 2014 obviously has a very good outlook. And the reason for which I said it is a very analytic, visionary, realistic budget. You know, and when we want to go into the nitty gritties of all these, well, your views that way, but more specifically, this matter of, you know, why it is the matter of this new fund at the that's what I'm trying to explain. Okay. That you see, with the issue, when we had a challenge with which we are, as a result of the situation. No, but I'm saying that what's the difference between that one, that part I understood. Yes. What's the difference between this new fund and the It's very different. Yeah, you see the difference, of course, it is this fund, there's no law back in it yet. It will come before the House, Parliament, with the legislation and all that we done. And clearly, it will be first, it will be first in such a manner that you, you cannot just touch it. It's just like the heritage fund, you know, the oil proceeds, the ones we put aside. You can't just touch it because the law will not permit you. And clearly the law will fashion in such a manner that no matter what the situation is, you can't just take that money for purposes that are not intended for that uh, particular plan. The difference. Well, let's move well, on. let's move forward and get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can slip that, 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 that before I move on. Yeah, uh, let me do some. But uh, you see, um, if you look at uh, the estimate that came to Parliament, the NDC outside will say that oh yes, because of the huge bill that we expected as a result of the civil spike, we 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 we've, we've got some big amount that we have to pay. That is why we're not able to take money into the other funds. Necessary funds that we have. But the question is if you look at the estimate that they've got across the ministries, all the ministries have their item, item two, that is a goods and services reduced not less than 50%. It means the money that is meant for goods and services were pushed to item one to compensate for that increase. So, how come there was no money 
into the citizen fund because whether you you if the the, the the increment in item one did not come, that money will definitely go to item two. Yeah, item but, one but, got but you see, you, that is why you, you may be you may be confusing. To, sorry to budget, he may be confusing viewers out there with the fact that item one. You know, um, a money is moved from item two to um, item one, so therefore there should not be any shortfalls or overruns. The fact is that when we look at 2013's budget, the allocated funds for all the sector ministries, you know, uh, you know, shot up astronomically. What it means, mm -hmm. therefore, is that government mm -hmm. had to find lam, lam, government had to find more money. Right, maybe you understand. Government uh, had to find more money uh, if for those have, sectors. If you have three children, right? The first one you invest in, the second in senior high, the third in your 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 expectation as you go by your finances and the end of the year you couldn't meet it. Then you call the children and say, You are the primary school, wait, I'm going to reduce your pockets money by 50%. You are the JSS, yes, yes, I have to. I'm going to reduce your 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 pockets money by 50% and add it to your senior, your senior for that person in the So as soon as you get out, then you also take that. The two of you, my resources can take good care of you and the children are good. Then you go and tell your wife that because of this adjustment that I've made, I, I cannot give you, the wife, what I'm supposed to give you. The wife will not understand because at the end of the day, it is the quantum of money that should go to the house that we have reduced from one, two to the third. That's exactly what they did. No, that's so, clearly misleading. No, it is not. Very it misleading. Go and take the activities, really the estimate, and you will see it. Uh, but what is the technicality that even I have What is item one? Actually? Item one is a uh, salary and monuments that you cannot do away with because at the end of the day, you have to pay the workers. So that one, no government will attempt reducing item one. Item two is goods and, goods and services. That is the money that is given to the ministry. For instance, you go to the Ministry of Agriculture. Item one is their salaries and monuments. Item two are uh, what they used to buy fuel, what they used to maintain their vehicles, they used to buy stationery, they would do for monitoring allowances, and those things are item two. Item three is for investment. So if you look physically to the estimate, you can see in all the, 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 the estimates that item two and three have been reduced. Some of the ministries did not get anything for item three. It means yeah. they are not going to. You see, the reason so why I just want to demonstrate. Is, I don't, don't, there's one quick thing I need to point I don't. out. We need to hear your, your my, selected my, my, my selected area. Yeah, but no, let me no, 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 it's not a starting, it will be the starting if. Uh, because you see, what I'm saying is not true. Yeah, because yeah, 2013, what I'm saying, just look at it. 2013, this is 2013. What is not true? What is item one and item, one and item two that they move, um, um, you know, money from the then, Yes. Order. You see, this is 2013 budget from Western Housing. Now, this is how much was voted by government for them. 86 million, 74,607 Ghana cities. But at the end of the day, the money that government had to release to that particular sector was 162 million 737,111. The variance is 183 percent. Are you getting the point? And that tells you clearly that though this is how much we voted in parliament for this particular sector, as a result of the numerous activities they ought to undertake during the period, they needed. 183 percent extra this to work. Let me, oh, look at, let me I mean, what I'm talking about. Look at, look at compensation of employees. That is item one. They are supposed to have 19 million 651,771 Ghana cities. They have 21 million 723,130. Increase of 10.5 percent. But let me finish. It means item one has shot up to 10.5 percent. So when they came to item two, they requested 805,566. Because this has shut up, they did not release this. They released only 63,870, making 7.9 percent. But look so at this loss here has yeah. gone to no, compensate for this. But so look why at the assets. Money the no, 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 look at assets. Look at it. Assets. Assets was 65,670,270. And it has shown that I'm going to have 40,000. You know the calculation? You know, which is a very of 815,000. So clearly, as compensated, clearly, clearly at the end yeah, of the day, government has spent far more money, money is than the element voted the money, for this it, sector. The money and that is, is the overruns. It's on 8,000. For us to progress, I'll, 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 I'll submit to one thing. This is one technicality.
I have no knowledge about. <laughs> so let us go into the matter of your interest. In my interest. And maybe one day my, we can bring you back to it. My, yes, exactly. Because my, this is something that is my, my interest is the rules and transport sector and the agriculture education. You see, we, 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 we look at the budget. And for instance, it looks like there are a lot of number of road constructions from the uh, donor side, and I think it's difficult to have the counterpart fund to get some of these projects done. So, uh, this year, yes, the government has promised going to have some of these constructions from the donor point of view and all that. But the most important thing is the counterpart fund, that which government should have money to do. This year, for instance, the Ministry of Rules and Houses is telling us that they have only 42 of the 42 percent of the total road network being good, it means 58 percent of our road is in a very bad situation. So the government is going to concentrate on road maintenance to make sure that they increase the good road from 42 percent. But the question is, what caused the increase in the percentage of bad roads in the country? Because the government was not releasing funds, especially to feeder roads. If you look at the estimate, feeder roads had very little money that they were not able to do reshaping, the annual reshaping that they do. And feeder roads take a chunk of road network that we have in this country, as compared to that of highways and then urban roads. So at the end of the day, if you don't do the reshaping, if you find it's an annual reshaping, it means every year they do the reshaping twice. Now they, they change it to uh, Annual, that's one year of free shipping. So, you know, some of these roads in our constituencies for two, three years have not seen any free shipping, no spot improvement. And it is getting, when you leave your roads unmaintained by cutting off the grasses, uh, clearing off uh, drains, what that get access to the main road surface, it causes damage to the road. So, the ministry this year, we, we sat at the community level, we asked them that they should make sure that instead of adding the number of rules, the length of new rules, new rules, they should rather go to maintenance. So, it is my prayer that this time around they will concentrate on maintenance of road and get a good maintain for us. But what so is the budget saying about that? This whole just the budget, the money has been, my worry is that the money has been voted. The budget, that section has been loaded. But looking at the previous record, are we going to have money to do that? Well, Let's wait and see. You know, I'm listening to you clearly. Yeah. The problem is, is not that the budget hasn't noticed your problem. Exactly. Is that, so that, that is the budget man, has catered for your It has budget. taken care of that. The budget has but, 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 but the problem is, if you look at what happened in 2030 and what they are intent to do, there's no way this budget could be remained up. And the end of the end of the of the end 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 there is the need for us to ensure that we continually maintain what we have, rather than focusing on, you know, constructing new roads, uh, leaving those uh, we have to deteriorate. Now, but the, the ministry itself, its planned agenda, they're looking for over three billion to carry out their. Activities. Oh, this I will go, you know, take a break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is In the House, your current affairs program about Parliament. Uh, we've been discussing the budget. We've looked at uh, the Honourable Kashiga's view of the budget, which he's going to wrap up on because we didn't get to finish before the break. And then we'll look at the Honourable Laya Honourable Kashiga, you didn't finish your point. Yeah, clearly. Thank you very much. And so, uh, these are the reasons for the, uh, the overruns and again also deficits as far as the statutory parts are concerned. Now, one of the steps that I'm taking in this budget to forestall that is um, getting some agencies, government agencies that subsist on the consolidated fund to not pay themselves because they are able to uh, actually pay themselves. I'm a member of the Public Accounts Committee, for instance. We made some of these recommendations and we're very uh, excited that it's been taken on board by government in that when you take, for instance, Ghana Standards Authority, they are able to generate enough revenue in IGF, you know, to more than six times how much they even take from government. So why must they continue to take money from government when they have surplus in their accounts? You know, and a number of agencies, as it were, a number of agencies, you know, have been taken off government 
um, um, uh, uh, that consolidated fund. And that in itself gives relief, you know, to government to really be able to meet some of these statutory obligations. And so 2014 obviously has a very good outlook. And the reason for which I said it is a very analytic, visionary, realistic budget. You know, and when we want to go into the nitty gritties of all these. Well, your views that way, but more specifically, this matter of, you know, why I raised the matter of this new fund, the investment, the infrastructure fund, and all these other funds, and they are already taken care of. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm trying to explain. That you see, with the issue, we had a challenge with which bill. As a result of the so same. What's the difference between that one? That part I understood. Yes. What's the difference between this new fund and all these other funds? It's very different. Yeah, you see the difference, of course, it is this fund, there's no law back in it yet. It will come before the House, Parliament, with the legislation and all that will be done. And clearly, it will be faced, it will be faced in such a manner that you, you cannot just touch it. It's just like the heritage fund, you know. The oil proceeds, the ones we put aside, you can't just touch it because the law will not permit you. And clearly, the law will fashion in such a manner that no matter what the situation is, you can't just take that money for purposes that are not intended for that uh, particular plan. So there's a difference. Well, let's move, well, on. Let's move forward and get into it. Yeah, yeah, tell you me. You can sleep that, 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 that before I move on. Yeah. Uh, let me do something. But, uh, you see, um, if you look at uh, the STV that came to power in NDC outside will say that, oh, yes, because of the huge bill that we have expected as a result of the single spine, we, 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 we got some big amount that we have to pay. That is why we're not able to take money into the other funds, the necessary funds that we have. But the question is, if you look at the estimate that they put across the ministries, all the ministries have their item, item two, that is a goods and services reduced not less than 50 percent. It means the money that is meant for goods and services were pushed to item one to compensate for that increase. So how come the, the, there was no money into the central fund? Because whether you you if the the, the the increment in item one did not come, that money would definitely go to item two. Item yeah, one but, got but the increase. You, that is why you may be you may be confusing. To, sorry to budget. He may be confusing viewers out there with the fact that item one. You know, um, a money is moved from item two to um, item one, so therefore there should not be any shortfalls or overruns. The fact is that when we look at 2013's budget, the allocated funds for all the sector ministries, you know, uh, you know, shot up astronomically. What it means, mm -hmm. therefore, is that government has to find more money. Government has to find more money for those you know, sectors. If you have three children, right? The first one in university, the second in senior high, the third in jail. Your, 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 your expectation, as you go by your finances, at the end of the year, you couldn't meet it. Then you call the children and say, You are the family school. Wait, I'm going to reduce your pocket money by 50%. You are the JSS. Yes, I have to. I'm going to reduce your, your, your pocket money by 50%. And add it to your senior, your senior for the in university. So as soon as you get out, then you also take that. The two of you, my resources can take good care of you, and the children agree. Then you go and tell your wife that because of this adjustment that I've made, I, I cannot give you, the wife, what I'm supposed to give you. The wife will not understand because at the end of the day, it is the quantum of money that should go to the house that we have reduced from one, two to the third. That's exactly what they did. No, that's so, clearly misleading. No, it is not. Very it misleading. Is not. Go and take the Go and take the activities. Really the estimate. And you will see it. That's one small the technicality that even I What is item one? Item one is a uh, salary and monuments that you cannot do away with. Because at the end of the day, you have to pay the wages. So that one, no government will attempt reducing item one. Item two is goods and, goods and services. That is the money that is given to the ministry. For instance, you go to the Ministry of Agriculture. Item one is their salaries and monuments. Item two are uh, what they used to buy for well, what they used to maintain their vehicles, they used to buy stationery, they do for monitoring allowances, and those things are items. 
two. Item three is for investment. So if you look physically to the estimate, you can see in all the, 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 the estimates that item two and three have been reduced. Some of the ministries did not get anything for item three. It means yes, they are not going to. You see, the reason why so I just want to demonstrate. I there's, don't, there's one, I big, don't there's understand. one big thing I need to point out. Exactly. We need to hear your. My, 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 my selected area, but no, no, let, 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 no, no, it, it's not a starting, it will be distorting if, uh, because you see, what I'm saying is not true, because 2013, what I'm saying, just look at it, 2013, this is 2013. What is not true? What is item one and item, item, one, and item two that they move, um, um, you know, money for the that, Yes, you see, this is 2013 budget for Western Housing. Now, this is how much was voted by government for them, 86 million, 74,600 and seven Ghana cities. But at the end of the day, the money that government had to release to that particular sector was 162 million seven hundred and thirty seven thousand one hundred and eleven. The variance is one eighty three percent. Are you getting the point? And that tells you clearly that though this is how much we voted in Parliament for this particular sector, as a result of the numerous activities they ought to undertake during the period, they needed 183 percent yes. extra this to work. Let me look oh, at, let me I mean, what are you talking look about? At, look, at, look at compensation of employees. That is item one. They are supposed to have 19 million 651,771 Ghana cities. They have 21 million 723,130. Increase of 10.5 percent. But let me finish. It means item one has shot up to 10.5 percent. So when they came to item two, they requested 805,566. Because this has shot up, they did not release this. They released only 63,870, making 7.9 percent. But look so at this assets. loss here you has gone to no, compensate but for this. But so look why at assets. More money to no, no, look at assets. Look at it. Assets. Assets was 65,617,270. And it has shown the government have 40,000. You know the calculation? You know, which is a variance of 815,000. So clearly, as compensated for clearly this. at the end of the day, government has spent far more money, money is than the government yeah. voted the money for this sector. The money and that is the overrunt. It's on 8,000. For us to progress, I'll, 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 I'll submit to one thing. This is one technicality. I have no knowledge about <laughs> So let us go into the matter of your interest. In. My interest. And maybe one day my, you can bring you back to my, my, yes, exactly. because my, this is something that is my, my interest is the rules and transport sector and the agriculture education. You see, we 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 we, we look at the budget and for instance looks like there are a lot of number of road constructions from the uh, donor side and I think it's difficult to happen there. Got a part funding to get some of these projects done. So, uh, this year, yes, the government has promised going to have some of these constructions from the donor point of view and all that. But the most important thing is the counterpart for the that which the government should have money to do. This year, for instance, the Ministry of Rules and Harvest is telling us that they have only 42 of the 42 percent of the total road that has been built. It means 58 percent of our road is in a very bad situation. So, the government is going to concentrate on road maintenance to make sure that they increase the good growth from 42 percent. But the question is, what caused the increase in the percentage of bad roads in the country? Because the government was not releasing funds, especially to feeder roads. If you look at the estimate, feeder roads had very little money that they were not able to do reshaping, the annual reshaping that they do. And feeder roads take a chunk of road network that we have in this country as compared to that of highways and then urban roads. So at the end of the day, if you don't do the reshaping, if you find a annual reshaping, it means every year they do the reshaping twice. Now they, they change it to uh, annual, that's one year of reshaping. So it knows, some of these roads in our consequences, for two, three years I've not seen any reshaping, no spot improvement, and it is getting, when you leave your roads unmaintained by cutting off the grasses, uh, clearing off uh, drains, what that get access to the main road surface, it caused damage to the road. So the ministry this year, we, we sat at the committee level, we asked them that they should make sure that instead of adding the number of roads, the length of new roads, new roads, they should rather go to maintenance. So it is my prayer that this time around they will concentrate on maintenance of road and get a good maintain for us. What's so the budget saying the, about that? This yes, the budget, the money has been, my worry is that the money has been voted. The budget, that section has been loaded. 
But looking at the previous records, are we going to have money to do that? Well, Let's wait and see. If I'm listening to you clearly, yeah. the problem is, is not that the budget hasn't noticed your problem. Exactly. Is that it? So that, in other words, the budget that, has catered for your budget. It has taken care of that. The budget has taken care of that. But, but, but the problem is, if you look at what happened in 2030 and what they are intent to do, there's no way this budget could be remained up. And the end of 2020, we have to wait. To yeah, just, that is exactly you know, what you know, happened. You I have to wait and see. Let me have my yeah. colleague. Oh, you want to help me? Yes, because see, <laughs> yeah, for, I instance, for instance, for <laughs> instance, uh, I, I tend to agree with a lot, some of the things you said about the road sector. Such as? Uh, for instance, the maintenance. Because obviously, if we have only 42% of good roads, there's the need for us to ensure that we continually maintain what we have, rather than focusing on you know, constructing new roads, uh, leaving those uh, we have to deteriorate. Now, but the, the ministry itself, its planned agenda, they're looking for over three billion to carry out their activities. What it therefore means is that they can just they can do just as much of all that they intend to do. And the reason for the work is that uh, though there is a focus on ensuring maintenance of roads, there may be the likelihood of wanting to start some new road and then funds being diverted, you know, to construct a new road rather than maintaining the existing roads. Are you happy with his comment? Do you agree with him? Uh, yeah, there are portions of it. that are with the fact that yes, you might have dedicated the lines on paper yeah. that says that one city is going to solve this problem that you agree with him. But he doesn't think that one city will come. Yeah, he doesn't think that that one city necessarily will go, will totally go to deal with that particular issue. Because there, there are always tendencies of you know, some pressures from somewhere for the construction of a certain route that probably also but, even... But, but should that even become an issue if um, the dedication has been made? In other words, that one CD has been made given to a situation. So should we be bothered about some ancillary thing that happens to come from some pressure point? We, we must be worried. Because what it therefore means is that uh, would that be misapplication? It will only result in misapplication. Where yeah. the money has been voted for, yeah. but it hasn't really. My, my, my so in that case, then he's right. No, I, that's why I'm saying that. I, 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 the reason why. Let, I let, let, to let me go. Ah, okay. So he basically <laughs> helped. Even if he didn't help. Then, me let me go to my next issue, sir. Back to the depth of education. Okay. Right. Uh, education. We we have the capitation grant that was first initiated by the new administration. Of fact that uh, we are going to release money to support basic education in terms of capitation grant. Capitation grant is now rest for about three quarters. Student teachers in the various headquarters that we have that we have I don't give it a benefit of that. God the third quarter is in the present we have come to the point that we are in the fourth quarter definitely it is three quarters. But if the second quarter had been paid but if you say that, then you are trying to say that for this whole year, nothing has happened. Right. No, it has happened. Right. Things have happened. Right. We have four quarters. Because he just said that it's two quarters. Yes. And he makes the point that we you just wrapped up on the third quarter and going into the fourth. No, no, no. And no, no, the third quarter is also why he keeps on. So the the thing is that we've just about finished the year yeah. and nothing has happened. Uh, yeah, yeah. You are in the rest of two quarters because um, of, like I said, the first quarter. You know why he keeps on saying that two quarters, two quarters? The second quarter, that when paid becomes a rest for two quarters, had been paid. But they haven't received it, and we are ending December. So the third teacher is on vacation. They haven't received the second quarter payment. So they will tell you, um, I'm third quarter in the So that let me give you a little bit of doubt and say that two quarters is enough. Two quarters in the rest. It means teachers are not going to buy two quarters. No blessing knows for teachers. That, that is untrue. So that is what they use the competition ground for. Those things have not been provided. In the battle, we were there. When the committee report shown that exercise with money meant for exercise with money released. Because of that, let me quickly jump to agriculture. You look at the fertilizer subsidy. Where we have a real four party. In a situation where, as a Greek minister, I stay the real four party and lays your input aside. Today, this year, 2013, it is after the rain that the satellite that has been subsidized when released. So we look at budget and people look that, at the that, protection that, that is also It is most untrue. untrue. It is true. Yeah, there were sector, delays. I, there were delays. Exactly. I'm happy with the delays. There were delays, yes. So but not after the, the rains, farmer, they didn't release the money. Definitely, we are not going to get the necessary yield. So if you look at the budget, 
You see, budget is not what you budget for, for projections alone. It's about the, what you've been able to do for 2013 and the portfolio that you are holding to enter 2014. If you look at the debt portfolio, I rest that we have definitely 2014 is not going to be the most successful. And it's only fair for the budget to be. Well, um, I, I think that the budget, by the way, for those the, who haven't had the chance to look at it, the budget is. is uh, where are we? I was looking for the title. The, the title, title is, is it is okay. rising, rising to the challenge. challenge. Rising to the challenge, mm -hmm. realigning. Real, yes, yeah, uh, rising to the challenge, realigning the budget to meet key national priorities. Yeah. I, I want to always you can respond to this. Yes. I'm throwing a question. Yeah. I always wonder why would the budget be themed to talk about budget, as opposed to talking about people's lives? Well, of course, I, I think that. Well, what is a budget? They are all estimate their projections, you know, as to the kinds of things that will be done to socially benefit the society or, uh, you know, the target um, audience or market. So, um, I mean, to talk about budgeting in the team is very, very appropriate. Yeah, it, will, it will not be surprising for anybody to notice the kind of leaps of advancement that we'll experience in 2014 because this um, this document is very strategic in nature and obviously address the challenges that confront us. I wish you had spoken last because you, you are the majority side. But since you didn't let's hear him. Well um, I I don't see any hope in this project. But the question of no one to my team if somebody who is naked wanted to watch you listening to the name is naked. We've, this is the fifth budget that we have the fifth budget in that administration of NDC that and all the time they present loaded budgets, its implementation is near. So there's, so there's nothing new. Well, we're going it's to, all you the guys, same. There's you, nothing you, new in the budget that's going to change the life of the American Rather, 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 rather they are going to tight the poor man on the streets down, dish their hand in the pocket, take the few that is left in his pocket, and that is the introduction of the introduction of the infrastructure bill. That increase, I, I, that I, increase, I, I hope you also add that, that taking off that, that a number of taxes. The bad by you know, 2.5%. A number of, a number of taxes. You increase the level of the taxes. The level of the taxes are also being used. Poor uh, Ghanaian on the street and forcibly pick the little money that now, that's left now, in his pocket out from the um, 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 Next thing, what should we expect when you come back to them? <laughs> We expect yeah, the budget is good. It helps you envisage what yeah. we, we expect to robust business. So let me ask you first. I want to do this with us. Yes. Next year, what I'm expecting is that a debt portfolio of 53% of our GDP is pushing to 2014. What I'm expecting is that a common fund, which is in our rest for 2%, is pushing to 2014. Get fund, which is in our rest for 2 but this is pushing to 24 seconds. So there's no hope for 24. What's well, Parliament going to be like? Yeah, Parliament is going to be very robust. Business in the House um, will be, uh, we will start in the NS again for in January, in February, hopefully. And uh, the expectation is that a number of bills will be passed. Uh, of course, the uh, information, right information, right information bill um, is also on the agenda. And in the same vein, we expect to pass a number of laws, including the infrastructure uh, fund, you know, which will be legalized, you know, for, for us to be able to put money in there. So it's, it's going to be, Parliament is, is going to be very busy, and we will be working in the next year. What we would say for next year is that we hope to see that um, we'll be doing more. This maybe you'll get to explain to us even uh, in more depth what exactly we're talking about with regard to some of these technicalities that some of us don't know. Um, we're going to be introducing, for example, a program called The Bill, which will actually take the public through the process of what a bill goes through, so that when you talk to us about the right information, we'll understand. Um, this has been in the house. If you're interested in letting us know how you feel or what you're thinking, your views, their discussion points, and any other matter, you can send us text. So our short code is 1403. That's 1403. And you can send anything. You can call us on 289 That's 289 The website that we'd like you to visit www.mrspeakergh that is www.mrspeakergh.com 
There you can watch this program. You can also uh, listen to the MPs on their various viewpoints. You can read a few other things about what they're doing and general news. We'll be happy to see you there. Till next time, have a nice day.